Supreme Court has nullified the judgment of the Court of Appeal that ordered the federal government to release the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra Ipa, Mr. Nnamdi Kano, from detention. The Supreme Court ordered the continuation of the trial bordering on terrorism preferred against Mr. Kano. And in a unanimous judgment prepared by Justice Garuba Mohammed, but read by Justice Emmanuel Agim, the five-member panel of justices say the federal government acted in their words irresponsibly when it forcibly, forcefully brought Kano back to the country from Kenya against all known laws. However, the EPS court held that it was not enough to divest the trial court of its jurisdiction to continue with the case. Let's take a listen to the counsels. We had hoped that uh, it would come our way, but it has gone the other way. It simply means that uh, we have to go back to the High Court and get done with this quickly. We still have hope. We are not in despair. By the grace of God, yes, so, victory is assured. Yes, we will, it, 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 we will lose a little time. We still have to go back. That's, that's all it means. But I, I'm very consoled by what the Supreme Court said, that um, he ought not to have been treated the way he was treated. His bail ought not to have been revoked. His home ought not ought to have been invaded. All that is a consolation to us. So, uh, we have hope. This is victory to our administration of criminal justice because it shows that uh, once you are an accused person, once you are a defendant, uh, no matter what excuse you want to bring to hide under the law to say that uh, you should not be tried, the Supreme Court have expressly, unequivocally stated clearly that we don't have the legislation that will vitiate the court from trying a defendant that has committed a crime. You must be tried for every offense you have committed. You saw that the court came very heavy on the security agencies where they have in any way you know, impaired on the rights, the fundamental rights of the defendant. However, our laws have made very clear provision for remedy. Where there's such infraction on the right of the defendant, then you can have, the, the, such a defendant can go to the civil court and then seek for civil remedies for the violation of his fundamental rights. And that is why, of course, we have the fundamental rights enforcement. Now, the councils were not the only ones that reacted to that judgment. The governor of Anambra State, Chukuma Soludo, also says he respects the rule of law, but believes a political solution could also be considered in this particular case. I am a governor who believes in the rule of law. And um, in the country today, when the Supreme Court speaks, that's final. And the... Um, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, in his uh, wisdom and judgment, considered that he should go for a fresh uh, trial. Uh, we can only say, I mean, we don't uh, question that, we don't challenge that, we'll just say uh, the rule of law will uh, prevail. And I think uh, uh, that um, uh, that will go through its uh, judicial process. Uh, for me, personally, and as everyone knows, that uh, I've been aware of the judicial process. But in spite of that, I have persistently and consistently called for a, for a political solution uh, to this issue. Now, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this particular case uh, between the leader of the proscribed IPOB, Namde Kano, and the federal government. I'm going to introduce my guests, two senior advocates of Nigeria, in a moment. But let's walk you through some very simplistic way on how we got here in the first place. So first, Namde Kano was rearrested in Kenya and extradited to Nigeria by the federal government in June 2021. Now, he was arraigned at the federal high court Abuja before Justice Bintan Yako on an initial four-count charge of treasonable felony, conspiracy to commit treasonable felony, terrorism, illegal importation of radio equipment, and defamation of uh, the character of former president, Mohamed Buhari. Now, the charges were later amended to a 15-count charge on terrorism and membership of the proscribed group. Justice Bintan Yako at the trial court had, in her ruling, dismissed eight out of the 15 charges, 
saying that Mr. Kano had questions to answer in the remaining seven charges. Of course, Kano was not pleased, filed an appeal on the remaining seven charges at the Court of Appeal. The court agreed with Kano and struck out the case, and by implication, is free to go. And the Leonard Silk will explain all of that. But the FG swiftly filed a stay of execution. Another, appeal, another panel of Court of uh, Appeal Court Justices sat and appealed FG's uh, stay of execution. Now, the FG appealed to the Supreme Court on the cost seven count charge, insisting on continuation of trial at the Federal High Court. Today, the Supreme Court sat and agreed with the federal government that Kanu should go back to the Federal High Court to defend himself. However, the Apex Court frowned at how Kanu has been handled or treated by the federal government, but is at liberty to file a civil case against the federal government. So just a round off or some kind of a sequence of how, of how we got here in the first place. So my guest to explore all of these issues, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, right here with me in the legal studio, is Mr. Wahab Shitu. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you for inviting me. And also joining us virtually is, uh, is another senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Paul Ananaba. Mr. Paul Ananaba, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's start with you, sir. Um, I'm sure you're quite familiar with this case. And just a legal perspective of what transpired today at the Supreme Court. Uh, well, the Supreme Court has pronounced and uh, essentially, the pronouncement of the Supreme Court can be categorized into three main aspects. The first aspect of the pronouncement, which is decisive, is that Mr. Namdi Kadum is requested to go back for his, for, to, uh, and uh, be arraigned on respect of the seven counts, to go and face his trial. Mm in respect of the seven counts of earlier decided by the trial court. That's the first one. The second question, which is also very instructive, is to also say that uh, the federal government can be, I mean, the way the federal government handled the, I mean, the deportation of Mr. Namde Kano outside the country to come and face the trial offense against uh, best practices actually slammed the federal government for the way and manner it handled the deportation. And, and also cautioned that that is likely to affect, that, that the federal government henceforth ought to be aware, ought to, ought to be sensitive about its image locally and internationally. That's also a strong indictment. The third one is to say, oh, the bail, that it was wrong of the trial court to have revoked the bail of Mr. Annam Dikano following the invasion of his uh, res uh, residence mm. by law enforcement agents. So those are the three key aspects. But as it is now, what is, fun uh, what is significant about the pronouncement of the Supreme Court is that Mr. Namdi Kano is now requested to go and face his trial. Now the question you want to now say is, okay, that is what the Supreme Court has decided. And once the Supreme Court has spoken, that's the final court. There's no appeal. You cannot appeal against the pronouncement of the Supreme Court. That's the law. And I must also say that the Supreme Court correctly interpreted the law. Because it's just like uh, the, I mean, the analogy one can give to this is the issue of stolen evidence. If you steal evidence, which is relevant in a court of competent jurisdiction, the fact that that evidence is stolen does not derogate from his admissibility. So you cannot say because the evidence was stolen, then it is not relevant. That's section 14 of the Evidence Act. So as far as the law is, is concerned, the Supreme Court, the APS Court, has correctly interpreted the law the way it should be interpreted. But the question that we should ask is that how, should, how do we deal with the Inamdekano situation? I'm in favor of a unified country. I'm in favor of a country that is united. A country that will... The, uh, the, the, you know, the Kanu situation must be handled very carefully. And this is a new regime. I, I, I'm in favor of taking a closer look, notwithstanding the, the, the case as pronounced by the Supreme Court. Uh, it's a very sensitive case. 
Uh, the governor of Anambra State mentioned the issue of adopting a political uh, solution. I think that also should be on the table. Yeah. But, uh, but, 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 I said you want to stop me here because I have some other, you know, clarifications I want to make. But I can. But, but on the case, right? On you know, the case. Yes, but uh, case. we're going to come to some of the things you're already uh, speaking about. But I wanted to get the perspective of uh, uh, Mr. Paul and Anaba. Mr. Paul, I'm sure you've had uh, the perspective of the Lenin Silk, your colleague, on this particular issue. I don't know what your interpretation or your perspective is. Uh, as far as what transpired at uh, the Apex Court is concerned today. All right, thank you. Wahab uh, Shitu, my brother, uh, I greet you. Um, I agree with Wahab Shitu uh, largely uh, to say that the Supreme Court is uh, final, not because it is infallible. It is infallible because it is final. Um, you have given a rundown of, of the a runoff to where we are today. Um, really, the expectation of many Nigerians it was clearly that um, uh, Nande Carlo will go home a free man today. So it is that that may have thrown this to the front burner. And I go further to say that this case does not turn only on law. If it turns only on law, then it would have been a different thing if it was turning only on law. It is both law and um, security. It's so sensitive, particularly for those from the southeast and some other people who believe in the cause of Nandekal. Um, when, when you take that into the international law balance, you begin to talk about uh, whether an act by a group that are asking for self-determination is a crime or not, even starting with the OAU charter and down. So you see that in Africa, we begin to look at the jurisprudence of the fact that before, because we needed independence, then uh, some of those acts will be considered uh, not secession or treason or disabled penalty, but really self-determination. So the, the, what I want to draw from that is, yes, the Supreme Court has made the point that uh, the decision that, yes, uh, um, contrary to uh, the decision of the Court of Appeal, Anna Nakalo should face those seven charges. Remember, the, Supreme, the Court of Appeal has, has dismissed those charges. But the Supreme Court also made the point that the federal government was wrong in the way they handled this. Now, asking a person who has been in detention for all this while, and whose detention is causing some discomfort uh, to go back to a civil suit whilst in detention, is of concern to me. I believe that the Supreme Court had all the, had all the powers has inherent powers to take any decision in the best interest of the country. It's actually a policy court. So my expectation would have been, having found that the way the arrest was done wasn't um, approved by the Supreme Court, having found that the invasion of Nando Carlos' uh, residence and all that uh, wasn't acceptable, um, I had expected that yes, Nandekalo should stand this trial, but the Supreme Court also had the right and the powers to have um, granted him bail upon certain conditions. That way we de-escalate because law is an instrument of social engineering 
and re-engineering. And I want to agree with uh, Governor Soludo that perhaps <clears throat> it is now time, now the Supreme Court has spoken, that even revocation of the bell was wrong. If the Supreme Court had found that the, uh, when the Supreme Court found that that bell was wrongly revoked, I believe that the Supreme Court would have made consequential orders, even in that respect, to say that that bell be restored. But um, now the can will now be expected to go to court again to ask for restoration of bail. You see, um, the psychological content of law is important um, so that the, a reasonable man will see that justice is not even delayed. Um, I don't know how long it could take to file such applications. That's my concern. But the Supreme Court, I agree, was right in saying, okay, since we are set aside the portion of the seven uh, counts, go and defend this, um, the, the seven counts before the federal court. But okay. meanwhile, since your bail was wrongly uh, revoked, your bail is restored on these, these conditions. Those are my perspective. However, the position of the Supreme Court remains the law and will continue to be the law. And I urge that every Nigerian should respect the decision of the Supreme Court and follow through rule of law. What I've All said right. is my expectations. But All right, Mr. Anana, but whatever the Supreme Court Mr. Is Anana, the if, I, if, if I can butt in, uh, so I can come back into the studio. Uh, just I'll come back to you, Ms. Anana, but, uh, Mr. Shichu. I, I was listening to some of the things you were saying. And then you, for those who are not legal minds like yourselves and uh, who want to understand why um, the reason why he appealed in the first place is because it was quashed and they uh, sustained the other seven and that same court is where it's going back to they will, they will be wondering what psychologically what will be his expectation from that particular court at the end of the day I, I don't know whether I made that question as plain as simplistic as I can this is not how the criminal justice system works. Which is why you need to educate us. When you are arraigned for a specific number of counts in a criminal trial process, in this case maybe 15 or 20 counts, and at the end of the trial process, I mean after the prosecution has led this case, or you file a, an objection to the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the charges, if the court finds based on the evidence or the proof mm. of evidence that some of the counts are sustainable, then you will say that you have a case to answer. And those ones that are not sustainable, the court will say, oh, they are, you are discharged and acquitted in respect of those counts, which is what the court has said here. The fact that the court has said you have a case to answer is not conclusive of guilt. Okay. It's saying that, oh, come and offer explanations to clear some gray areas in order to be able to either prove your innocence or your guilt. So the window, that does not distract from the fair hearing, you know, mindset of the trial court. And all lawyers know this fact. Uh, in a criminal trial, you have an option to allow the prosecution to call all his evidence. And at the end of the, of the case, when it is your turn, you either elect to defend the, amid the case of the prosecution, or you choose to uh, make an application for, of no case. The weak arguments will be taken in respect of your application on no case submission, and the court will give a ruling in respect of each of the counts, mm. which is what the court has done here. Eight of them were dismissed, seven of them were upheld. He felt dissatisfied, and he appealed. The Court of Appeal agreed with him. But unfortunately, the Court of Appeal is not the final court. The state also appealed against the decision of the Court of Appeal. And the Supreme Court has today said, oh, go back and face your seven trial in respect of the seven count charge. So what the Supreme Court has done is consistent with the law. Because, you know, the, the Supreme Court is a court of law, is a court of justice. It's also a policy court. At that level, all issues, the records, everything will be considered. 
And you can see that the Supreme Court examined all the issues and made pronouncement. They examined the question of his illegal you know, deportation and pronounced that that is clearly offensive and that henceforth uh, our country should be conscious of his image locally and internationally. That's a strong message mm. coming from the Supreme Court. And secondly, when security agencies invade the premises of a suspect who is on bail, the trial court was not entitled to now revoke the bail after the man fled for, for his life. Again, that is a very strong statement. You know, so on all issues, the Supreme Court has done justice to the matter. Uh, you know, when somebody is alleged to have committed any offense, it remains an allegation. Yes, sir. He, he, he has the right to prove his innocence or guilt in a fair trial process. And the ones we should advocate here are several options open to the federal yes, government. I, I was going to that yes. because of time. So, yes. because you, you have to look at it this vis a vis the tension that has enveloped that region of the country where it comes from. We have the issue of IPOB, sit at home and all of that. So with all of this decision, I want you to put in perspective, what is the way forward? Well, the way forward is the rule of, one option is the rule of law option, mm. which is to say, if somebody is alleged to have committed an offense, mm. he should be allowed to go through the trial process, okay. subject to the guarantee of his liberty. In this case, release him on bail, allow him to face his trial, but don't, while he's facing his trial, don't tamper with his liberty, subject to assurances that he will make himself available and subject to assurances that he will not commit any further offense, alleged offenses. That's one option. Okay. The second option that government can look at, in the spirit of unifying the country, government may, may look at the exercise of powers of the Attorney General under Section 174 of the Constitution that empowers the Attorney General to look at the case and decide whether in the overall public interest it is desirable either to continue the prosecution or discontinue the prosecution or enter a nolly, I mean terminate the proceedings. The Attorney General can exercise that. But he, he, in exercising those powers, mm. he has to have regard to public safety, public interest, paramount. So are you, are you saying just... So that before I go to Mr. Anana, by I'm saying, saying that all options, yes. all options should be considered. So wh what I wanted to ask is, what advice, in case the federal government comes forward, what advice will you, if you have the chance, to give to Nandi Kano to, 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 in terms of the agreement you should come up with, mm -hmm. with the federal well, government? First of all, Nandi Kano must, because the federal government is concerned about terrorism. Every serious government, mm. allegations body on, uh, on terrorism, it's a serious uh, allegation. There's, you must be prepared to renounce all, you know, acts. Okay. All alleged acts of terrorism. Okay. You must give an undertaking. You must be ready to say, okay, I, I also, you must also give an undertaking to make the peace. Okay. To ensure that, because peace is also very important to the federal government. Because in, in the interest of the, uh, of the peace uh, building process, Federal government might want to engage elements who are close to Namdekano, including governors from that region, mm. to be able to see whether this matter can be amicably resolved okay. in a manner that will not threaten the peace process, uh, all right. in a manner that will ensure that uh, uh, further acts of terrorism in that region or anywhere are not you know, anticipated or perpetrated. Uh, good point. Let, let me come to you, Mr. Ananaba. Uh, as we begin to wrap up, uh, this similar question I asked uh, uh, the Leonard Silk as well, just like you. Um, we have to look at this broadly in terms of national security. If you were to advise both sides, both the federal government, he is giving some advice, both the federal government and Namdi Kano and his team, what exactly would you be telling them uh, just for us to have this national peace and move forward as a country? Carlo. Um, the Supreme Court has given a decision and that is the final decision on that point. That is, you are still innocent. There are allegations against you. There are seven. Go and defend it. You had a bail. The judge revoked it. That revocation is wrong. Go back and take due process and ask for your bail. Supreme Court has already said that you are you are clearly more or less entitled to a bail. 
get your bell, prepare your defense, and face up this charge. That is Namdekal. For the federal government, I think that the country has so much concerns and worries that this matter ought to be looked at now after the pronouncements of the Supreme Court showing that this has affected our image abroad, it has affected our image in Nigeria, invasion of poverty um, and fundamental rights of uh, and, and even the family, beyond even name. So at this point, I think that the federal government should also take a reconciliatory position. And um, um, we will achieve more in the country uh, if Nambekano's case is taken out. But as, as, a, as a responsible government too, they should get, look for some guarantees. Since Governor Saludo has come up to say political solution is there, that's, that's, that, that can be looked at. And like my brother Shinto said, there are several options. The federal government can withdraw the charge. They can, the Attorney General can enter a knowledge and bring the case to an end. And it shouldn't be treated in such a way as if Nandekano has been convicted and is now asking for a reprieve. No. Our constitution says that Nandekano, even at his detention for all these periods and all that, is still innocent until proved guilty. That should not be denied him. So I look forward to him going, uh, kind of going on bail. Right. I look forward okay. to okay. is also uh, showing patriotism by ensuring that further um, um, issues okay. do not arise from okay. Um, okay. the way things he will go about his affairs. Okay. <clears throat> until okay. this trial is done as uh, done okay. or done with. So what am I saying? Okay. It's important. Let me say if I if I now. Let me say if I'm yes. important. Uh, that that would be a great place to conclude our thought. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're totally out of time. Uh, so my sincere apologies. Mr. Paul Ananaba, senior advocate of Nigeria joining us to speak on this uh, recent Supreme Court pronouncement on Namdi Kanu's case, uh, joining us virtually. Thank you so much. And also here in the studio in Lagos, Mr. Wahab Shitu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for your very insightful thoughts on this. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you forward. so much for inviting me. Thank you. <laughs>